ATT. Power 94. That is another country cash out. Foreign. Check this out. You're locked inside your number one people's station. I'm excited about this. Been talking about this for the last 24 hours uh, in studio guests right now. It is Mayor Andy Berg. Good to be here this morning. You know what? I'm so excited for you to be here. Uh, for those that do not know how I got this interview, I tweeted Mayor Andy Berg and asked for an interview, and you tweet me right back, was like, yeah, and then Miss St Mrs. Stone hit me back and was like, all right, when you want to come in, like, we can get this going, so I'm excited for you to be here. Well, it's great when you can use all forms of communication, uh, you know, I, I have a hard time, we can't really talk over the radio nearly as much, but if you tweet me and let me know what's going on, then I'm, I'm able to tweet back at you and say, hey, let's, let's get together. Absolutely. I want to jump right into it, and I do want to say this, though, because uh, your campaign was awesome. I just want to say I'm definitely a fan of how you have invited a lot more young people to get involved with politics, from how you use social media to how you use old school methods of phone banking. Like all of those things really helped people to understand that you are for everybody. And, uh, and this is a flawless campaign, I just want to tell you that. Well, th thanks so much. <laughs> Here, here's what is important to me about politics is it's the conversation. Mm -hmm. So young people in particular get energized by the conversation and, and Facebook and Twitter and these other methods are way so that it's not just me talking to or at people. Right. You can talk with people mm -hmm. and that makes it really nice. And so I, last week, for example, I did a Twitter hour. Mm -hmm. you, I'm not sure whether, no, you must not have tweeted me during that time. No, but, I didn't. But, um, but we, you know, people can ask questions, I can respond, they can give me their feedback, and, and it's a great way to find out what's going on in people's lives, mm -hmm. what they care about, and what we need to do to, to transform our community. Well, speaking of transforming the community, uh, recently you did the budget rollout, and uh, you gave your proposal of different things that you want to happen. And I want to say this, you shook up Chattanooga. Goodness gracious, you came in, you re, uh, renamed, redid the department, and just really kind of said, you know what, this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to do it, these are the people that's going to help me to get this job done to help the city. So, I mean, I was literally on edge, like, uh, who's staying, who's going, what's going on, what's the names, who is it going to be? And so, uh, for the first time, I was, and not only myself, but just the conversation in the barbershops and the hair salons, and just on the bus stop, everywhere, people were saying, what's going to happen, what direction is the city going in. So with this budget rollout, you're giving us opportunity to see what you are trying to do uh, coming up in the next coming years. Now, uh, a lot of people, let's just jump right into it, Harriet Tubman, uh, housing development, uh, now vacant property, and uh, I know you're wanting the city to purchase this property. Tell us what's the overall goal and how is this going to help the community, especially in the East Chattanooga area. That's my neck of the woods, so this is very personal. Well, good. Well. <laughs> When, uh, when we rolled out the budget, it's part of our process, that, like you talked about, of let's not just do what we're doing because that's what we did last year. Right. Let's do something because it's going to get real results for Chattanoogans. And so as part of that, I said, here's what our budget is about. It's what our communities should be about. Safer streets, smarter students, stronger neighborhoods, and sounder government. Mm -hmm. And so the Harriet Tubman is about stronger neighborhoods and growing our local economy. The city, the CHA, mm -hmm this year and every year spends $300,000 a year just to keep Tubman boarded up. Mm -hmm. So that's what we face and it's basically doing nothing for that neighborhood. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy it, mm -hmm. we're going to um, do some work on the property, hopefully um, getting involved people around the area so that we can bring jobs to that just on the cleanup part. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to use that site for economic development to say we're going to connect bringing new jobs and new businesses to Chattanooga with the revitalization of East Chattanooga. And that's a fantastic opportunity to bring jobs all through our city, which is what I campaigned on. You, okay, so the whole East Chattanooga area, first of all, I have the opportunity to, I'm one of those people, when you say you want to change something and be a part of something happening, I got involved with Glass House Collective, and I worked with them. Um, they're redoing the sidewalks, and, the, and, and they have different art projects going on in the area, uh, summer programs for the kids. Um, what can we do to make sure that these programs do not fall by the wayside? Because it's all great to have the, uh, the Harriet Tubman area developed, but is it going to employ people from that neighborhood? Is it going to be jobs that 
people um, who necessarily may not have a college education or a degree can work? Well, think about it in a couple of different stages. Number one is you have this, the construction jobs for what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to make sure that we get people from the area involved in that process. Mm -hmm. And then we want to talk to whoever's coming in there about connecting what goes on there to the community. I've talked to Glasshouse Collective and neighborhood associations to say, how is it that we use this opportunity mm -hmm. to build a stronger East Chattanooga? Uh, I think it's fantastic. This is, this is what moving forward means, and, and having these values that you're talking about is really important as we look at the next phase of the Tubman site. Um, speaking of areas that may uh, kind of, some people feel like have fallen by the wayside. Recently we had a shooting in East Lake. A 16-year-old 16 16 year pregnant girl was shot in the back. Um, I know you talked about hiring a prosecutor and talked about uh, more police officers. What are the target areas that's going to have impact when uh, these new officers come in? Because somewhere, it's like a forgotten city, especially over in East Lake. Well, let me start with the obvious. Our streets are too dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I hear from the police chief every time there's a shooting in our city, and with all due respect to him, I hear from him way too often. And mm -hmm. it, bothers me to my core. Right. So what we're trying to do is bring in new officers to get into the right areas where mm -hmm. there's problems, but we are also employing the high point issue. It's not just about the number of officers. It's mm -hmm. about what they do. So we want them more involved in the community, right. out of their cars, talking to people, community policing. And right now it's difficult for them to do so because they are listening to their radio having to go from mm -hmm. call to call. Mm -hmm. And instead what we need to do is to be more proactive right. and saying here's where we need to be, here's what we're looking at. So the High Point Initiative, which I talk about a lot, is about identifying the problem, not only the problem areas, mm -hmm. but the problem people. Because usually even in areas like East Lake where we've had a number of shootings, there's just a few people. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of great people there, Absolutely. and there are a few people there who are causing all the problems. And so making sure that we understand, let's not just lump all of East Lake courts mm -hmm. into one, one group, but say actually there's a few people at the courts who mm -hmm. are causing the problem, and let's focus in on them. How do you plan to target those few people to, to really identify them because you don't necessarily have people telling you. I know the police department definitely has a list of people that they know that are known offenders, that are repeat offenders. Um, we talked about harsher federal uh, sentencing and things of that nature. And how is that going to work? Because some people are not necessarily committing the same crimes they used to, but that association, they are still with the same people. So let's just say wrong place, wrong time, this person is the bigger fish to catch, but they're not necessarily the one that did the offense. Well, we're moving to a place with the High Point Initiative. That's also about resetting the relationship between the police department and mm -hmm. the community. Right. So that, they, that we see ourselves together rather than the police department is coming in on top of the community. Correct. And if you can do that, you can get a lot more information from people about what's going on in the area. Um, there was an article this morning about the unsolved shootings that go on in our city. Right. And it's sad to me when people would rather stay quiet mm -hmm. and not tell police what's going on rather than say, Here, here's what happened in our neighborhood. That's because of trust. It is. So we have to build that trust up so that we have a better relationship. And then we need to use that opportunity to tell people we don't want to solve this problem. We can't solve this problem by incarceration. Right. We will take the people who are causing, who refuse to change and we will make sure that they are dealt with appropriately. But if you will put down your weapons mm -hmm. and you will come to the table with a genuine desire to change, we have opportunities for you. Drug and alcohol um, uh, rehabilitation, vocational rehabilitation. These are the support that our community will give you, but you've got to you've got to understand if you don't take this opportunity, mm -hmm. you're leaving us no other options. Absolutely. WJTT Power 94, that is Kanye, Jay-Z, Click, shouts out to Mayor Andy Burke. He likes uh <laughs> he likes Kanye and Jay-Z. <laughs> Bought the last two CDs. That's what's up. Oh yeah, I, I love uh, a little Kanye and a little Jay Z, and um, again, this is uh, 
I listen. I, if you go in my car right now, the I've got CDs. I've got uh, my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and my nice. CD still. Uh, but I've got um, Jesus in the side <laughs> pocket, not in the CD right. thing. So I, that's I, I can't help it. That's the Man. way it is. Oh, you know, I got to put you on somebody, Kendrick Lamar. Oh, I've heard. I haven't. I don't have the CD. I heard it's great though. Oh my! You know what? I'm gonna gift that to you. I'm going to make sure that I drop you off Kendrick Lamar CD. Well, I will definitely be back on this show. <laughs> uh, this, this is now starting to be a good deal. I just come in every week, I get a new CD. That sounds Absolutely. good. Absolutely. You are welcome here anytime. And I have to say, um, President Barack Obama came to Chattanooga, and you had the opportunity to ride in the limo. Um, so what did you talk about? <laughs> well, that is one of the greatest honors of my life, to welcome uh, Barack Obama to my hometown. Right. How, how does it get better than that? It doesn't. It, it really is incredible. <laughs> the president was fantastic. He was so kind and generous and gracious. He wanted to know about Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know what was happening here. Um, he wanted to understand how we could build a better middle class. Mm -hmm. uh, he was focused in on what was driving our economy, what mm -hmm. was helping people. He also wanted to know what was what was hurting them, and so uh, I just can't tell you how fantastic it was for our city for him to be interested in it, to shine a light on us wherever he goes. Right, the light shines with him. He put it on Chattanooga, and that was a great opportunity for us. It really, really was a cool opportunity, and um, you know, as far as what's what's next for the city, what do you hope to accomplish? Um, just starting out, because starting out, you really, really went there with kind of shaking up the city. What is the overall goal in the next year? Um, where do you see us going? Well, um, there are really a few things. Number one is stop the, reduce the shootings. Mm -hmm. We've just got to pull the shootings down, and we will. The, the next part is you've never seen a focus of the city on youth development like we have today. We have to mm -hmm. invest in our city's future. Um, and then the third part is that we have to build up our neighborhoods right. and make sure that people everywhere have access to opportunity and jobs. And then finally, uh, I'm really proud on the, this budget that we're doing all that without a tax increase. Well, I, I saw that. I saw and, the budget. And in fact, all these new initiatives you've heard me talking about, that because the overall assessments of taxes are lower, we're doing this with a burden on the city as a whole that is actually diminished. So, so this is really uh, what we're talking about. This is our roadmap for the next year. Mm -hmm. And I am convinced that because we're focused on results, mm -hmm. on making people's lives better, um, that you're going to see a more effective city government than you've ever seen. Well, I just want to say thank you for uh, coming in and talking to us. Uh, we, we really, really want to see some awesome things happen with the city, especially and especially with the urban African American community because at the end of the day, it feels like uh, sometimes we are just kind of left in the wayside. So the fact that you are saying, okay, this is the area we're gonna focus on and this is where we're planning to do next, and it's directly affecting the African American community, I think that's awesome. I stay in the East Chattanooga area. I wanna see some great things happen with Harriet Tubman. My church home is there, the World Church of the Living God. And so everything connected in that area affects everybody. And so I do, you know, it is a personal um, connection that I have to the budget rollout and things that are happening in the city and in, in the community. I know people that stay in East, like I know people that, you know, that stay on the mountain. So <laughs> everybody is connected and I, I think it's awesome. And there feels like um, there's a change and a bridging of the gap that's kind of been here. It's, it's, it's sometimes felt like us and them like, we don't really know what's going on at City Hall, and no one cares to inform us. So the fact that you're here and you're talking to us, I just greatly appreciate it, and I thank you for your time. Well, thanks so much. The, the amazing thing about being mayor is that people should feel a personal connection to you and to their government. This is, this is your government. Uh, a mayor has tremendous amount of effect on your neighborhood and your jobs and what goes on here and so by by having a conversation and listening to your concerns helps me do my job better
Absolutely. You know what, Mayor Andy Burke, you're doing an awesome job, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Keep it locked inside of your people station. I have used every bit of my 30 minutes. Sure did. Uh, once again, thank you to uh, Mayor Andy Burke. Mrs. Stone, she's awesome for just everybody making this happen. And I'm going to tweet you again as well. <laughs> I look forward to it. And so can anybody else at Andy Burke, or you can always shoot me an email to mayor at chattanooga.gov. There you go. There you have it. We are definitely uh, pass that information along. Keep it locked inside of your people station. We're stepping inside of your 11 o'clock. Continuing the biggest in hip-hop and R&B music, Power 94.